let's say we have the following parameter inputs for Black Scholes, and I want to implement uh, the Black Scholes model. I need to first of all so parameters stock price, exercise, time to maturity, risk free rate, dividend yield, sigma, which is the level of volatility. First of all, we need we need to calculate D1, which is equal to following in line with the representation given here for black shoals. D1 would be equal to, so we open bracket, natural logarithm, open bracket, again, uh, KS divided by K, close brackets, plus R, negative Q, Q being the dividend yield, which happens to be 0%, plus sigma squared, so open brackets, sigma squared, so to the power of 2, divided by 2, close brackets, multiplied by t, t being the maturity, and we close brackets, and that's what's over the line here, and then under, underneath the line we would have sigma multiplied by the square root of time, so the time period being 0 0.25, adding to the power of 0 0.5 is the square root, plus off brackets, and we have D1. To estimate D2, D2 is equal to uh, sigma, so equal to D1 minus sigma multiplied by the square root of time. So again we take the time period and put to the power of uh, 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 anything to the power of 0 0.5 is equivalent to taking the square root that needs to change to uh, decimal so let's come up here and just change to a number and maybe we'll go four decimal places now, so we have D1 and we have D2, and uh, in the formula we have to, in using black shoals, so we have D1 and we have D2, and to recap on our formulas, well, we might take uh, the formulas presented here, so just copy and paste. So paste special picture and we can see D1, the natural logarithm of S over K or X plus R negative Q plus sigma squared divided by 2 multiplied by t, t is b3, all over sigma, sigma, square root of t, and taking the square root of b3 is equivalent to putting to the power of 0 0.5, okay, and d1 can be written, d2 can be written as such, so the only difference is, the difference <coughs> resides in terms of the positive sigma and the negative sigma going from d1 to d2 or more simply d, d2 can be written as d1 minus sigma square root of t and that's how we performed the calculation here so b8 minus b6 corresponds with d2 equal to d1 minus sigma square root of t 
and we return and then uh, d1 must be transformed into norms dist because here we've norms dist d1 norms dist d2 or the normal chemical probability of d1 normal chemical probability of d2 so we can write nd1 equals to norms this close brackets and also for nd2 equals norms this Two. Now, uh, again, we can go round here in Excel. Uh, what is norms dist? The norms dist is the normal cumulative probability. So it's it's a function available in Excel, and um, it. If once we have the standardized variable z, and we assume in, the cal in calculating d1 and d2 they are standardized, we have a, a distribution mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, but the function returns the standard normal cumulative distribution function. Okay, and that becomes very convenient in making our estimation for the call. Okay, so to estimate the call, all we need to, to, to do here is follow a function here. So s multiplied by the exponential, uh, negative exponential, so exp, open bracket, negative the dividend yield, which turns out to be zero, so no effect this time, but put in for completeness, multiplied by, in turn, by nd1, nd1 minus x or k, so the exercise price multiplied or discounted by the rate of interest, so negative the rate of interest, multiplied by t. So again, negative the rate of interest multiplied by t time period multiplied in turn by nd2. And that's the value of the option if we expressed in currency or perhaps dollars. We get the same values here, approximately, perhaps. So three nine nine. To estimate the, the value of the put option, uh, we need using the Black Scholes formula. We need uh, a negative, a negative d one, negative d two. So we can insert. Shift cells down and perhaps another cell down and find n negative d1. And n negative d2. Which is equal to norms this open bracket negative d1 close brackets and close brackets again and to verify that the results here should be correct if we add both this value N D one and N negative D one should be equal to zero and likewise 
when we add both of n d2 and n negative d2, the sum of both values should also be equal to 1. So to get the put, we need to use this as our guide. So equal to x or k multiplied by exp, open bracket, negative the rate of interest multiplied by time period multiplied by nd negative 2 so nd negative 2 minus s multiplied by n negative d1 or probably first of all exp uh, negative the discount rate multiplied by t multiplied by t multiplied by n negative d2 so n negative n negative d1 following in line here and we get 167 which we can verify from an example done previously so let's place this uh, black shoals formulas to one side and copy and paste and compare and again um, 167 now these this example I took from uh, Robert McDonald's book uh, Drift Markets and I think it was the third edition and it's a book very it's a book very similar to uh, John C. Holt's book. Uh, difference in emphasis and also um, the MacDonald book, the Derivative Markets, uh, provides some VBA um, uh, functions, uh, and that can be downloaded uh, on a spreadsheet. So. Um, the, the MacDonald book is a good complementary textbook to the John C. John C. Hull Option Futures at a Derivatives book. Next, I'll verify the result I got here uh, using uh, put call parity. Now, put call parity, we can take this formulation here and just insert. So, paste. And. Um, what this would say is that the put option, so the put, the put is equal to the value of the call, so the time value is equal to the time value of the call, plus the exercise discounted exp, so exp negative the rate of interest. So it's EXP negative the rate of interest by time uh, minus S multiplied by EXP negative dividend yield multiplied by time. return and we find get the same value of one dollar sixty so we can express that as an accounting figure and it's the same so put call parity should always hold, and if it doesn't hold, then there's a problem in your black shows or other type of calculations for estimating the value of options.